Hello and welcome to episode 50 of the Cloud Computing for the C-Suite show with Brad Nelson, an internationally recognised and the world's number one cloud industry expert and thought leader, David Linthicum. This show is sponsored by Nelson Hilliard, cloud computing recruitment specialist, placing great people in cloud, IoT, fintech and AI. In this week's show, we will be talking about that the end of the year is nearly upon us and it's time to renew the public cloud contracts. So here is how to get the biggest discounts from your public cloud providers. Hi, Dave. Dave, we've reached the big 5-0 for the C-Suite show, and it's great to have you on another week. Yeah, it's great to be here. 50 shows in, man. We'll see if we make it another 50, maybe another 150, maybe another 1,000. Uh, Absolutely. Let's not get too uh, in front of ourselves. <laughs> it take every day as it comes. <laughs> but no, you're right. It, 50 has just come around so quickly. It really has. And, uh, you know, it's been a pleasure to do these shows with you on a, on a weekly basis. And, you know, making sure that we're getting some great content content out there, sorry, uh, to everyone that, that in the cloud world. So it's really important we get some great feedback from the show. So, uh, yeah, no, thanks for being a part of this. It's been a, a great project to work on. Yeah, likewise. Good to be here. And so, look, we, you know, we've got an opening question because it is coming to the end of the year. And, you know, these are the questions that, that get asked uh, a lot by, I know you get asked a lot. I get sort of re asked reasonably amounts about this sort of thing. So, uh, you know, I think it's, uh, it's good we cover it off. So why does this, this sort of situation remind us of, of big enterprise IT deals, though? Because right, they're almost identical. And, and it's funny. It's like uh, the, the folks who worked at, uh, you know, the big enterprise software providers, are now working at the cloud providers in essence, uh, you know, playing the same games, you know, waiting till the end of the quarter and, you know, trying to get the biggest, uh, uh, biggest profit margins and give the less, less discounts. And of course the analysts are, you know, telling the, the enterprises out there to wait until the last minute and always look at the alternatives, things like that. And it's, it's really becoming kind of the same game we played in the enterprise space for years, which is now transferring into cloud. You know, before, you know, a couple of years ago, big cloud providers didn't discount significantly. There were no, you know, deals made. So people were in essence buying as a utility if I'm buying power as a business or I'm buying power as a customer, I'm going to pay almost the same for the power. And so that kind of applied in the cloud computing world. It no longer is it. It's basically like selling big software now, which is interesting, but you know, a bit disconcerting in the fact that we shouldn't be moving forward away from this model. We seem to be stalled in it. So going forward, you know, again, you know, it's this time of year. What do you really see as the crunch points? How can people really leverage the best deals? You know, it's an even playing field out there. People are offering the discounts, but how do you know you're getting the best deal out there, Dave? I think you have to look at the comps out there and there's uh, a lot of websites that report cloud pricing. You can Google away for those and in terms of what people are paying and if and they ha have any kind of special discounts, government discounts, things like that. Uh, so you need to pay attention though. So, you know, government contracts are public. You can read those. Uh, some of the enterprise uh, publicly traded companies have public deals and you can look at those. But pretty much everybody knows what the larger deals are that are being paid for the uh, paid for the cloud. It's almost like, uh, uh, at least in the states, you know, when you buy a car, you're always very aware of who's getting the discounts, who's providing the uh, manufacturing incentives, how much people are paying for the cars. Uh, so you have, you know, a pretty good idea that if you're getting a car for a certain price, that you're, you know, so many dollars over invoice, under invoice, whatever, and you can kind of compare that with the other deals that are, you know, being had. You know, guys like, uh, um, you know, CarPoint and you know, CarMax and uh, you know, all the, uh, you know, all the other car, you know, firms. Uh, excuse me, car websites out there that are basically looking at the stuff. So the biggest way to negotiation with cloud providers is to show an alternative. I mean, if the fact of the matter is that you know, there's only one major cloud provider that you're leveraging then they're pretty much going to have you, uh, you know, over a barrel in terms of what they're going to charge you for the price. And they understand that. And specifically, if you bound all your applications to their cloud native databases, it's going to be very difficult for you to egress or move. And so you need to think about that as you start moving into a particular cloud provider. Now we're into multi-clouds, the ability to kind of broker cloud systems, you know, in and between each other, the ability to kind of leverage least least cost, um, you know, least cost pricing for storage systems, compute systems. That's all well and good, but the reality is that if we're going to build an application, that's typically going to be a cloud native application. We're going to be bound to a particular cloud, and before you do that, not after you do that, that's when the negotiations should take place. And so I know that I'm going to get a good deal for these people for the next, you know, five years. 
you know, versus committing to a cloud provider that's going to, in essence, you know, um, you know, throw you throw you in the bus. And I, I think a lot of that's happening right now is the profit margins are starting to get, uh, you know, increasingly bold out there as people are kind of leveraging this stuff as the next generation technology. So, you know, back in 2008, 10 years ago, you know, cloud computing was just getting going and they were discounting all the time. We were hearing about discounts pretty much pretty much every couple of months, major discounts. You know, those days are kind of over. And I think a lot of it is specific to enterprises, specific to types of clients, specific to types of usage, specific to SLAs. And it's getting very complex very quickly. And I think people are rightfully so getting a little discouraged in the fact that they have to go out there and make these prices and negotiate these prices, where many times procurement organizations have no experience with dealing with cloud providers. Yeah, so right. And and look, you raised a good point there about the, the world of multi-cloud. Uh, and I think that, again, has, has added a, an extra layer of complication because, you know, many uh, companies are using more than one cloud provider for various different parts of cloud. And so there's multiple contracts that need to be negotiated as opposed to just, you know, one cloud provider. Uh, and, and I guess it's identifying where your best your money's best spent within that multi-cloud hierarchy, as it were, of, of usage and, and why you're using that particular part for uh, you know, the business. And I guess it's um, it just adds that that extra layer. It's like you said, actually, in the Australia show, you almost need a, a cloud office with a, you know, someone that's specifically around the sort of financial aspect of cloud in order to make sure that the, the budgets are being met because we're saving money. In a, on a multi-cloud, multi-contract basis. So, you know, what do people do when they've got, you know, multiple contracts going on for multi-cloud and a, an infrastructure contract? Where do, where do people look to do that? How do, they, how do they look at that, Dave, and renegotiate those contracts? What would you do from the ground up? Well, number one, they're very complex. They have to consider them one at, one at a time. It's very much like we, you know, had these contracts with IBM and Oracle and all the other big cloud, uh, big technology providers out there. So they basically manage them in much the same way. But to your point, the ability to kind of abstract that into a cloud business office or other offices. So in essence, we have a CFO who does nothing but negotiates the different cloud deals probably isn't such a bad idea. I'll even see a, um, you know, kind of a future uh, skill set for people who are going to be able to um, you know, become lawyers who do nothing but negotiate cloud-based contracts for people who go from company to company that are consulting and negotiate the best price of those systems. We're going to have lots of kind of odd things occur, you know, coming forward. Also, if you get into the cloud brokering systems, we're in essence, you know, putting an abstraction layer between the public cloud providers and us, the people who are using it, and the cloud becomes kind of a sort of commodity there. And how do you kind of trade one off from the other? And obviously, that's kind of the best way to do it. But unfortunately, we have to leverage cloud native features. We have to leverage certain things that are native to a particular cloud. So that kind of moves us away from dealing with this brokering commodity technology coming forward. So long and short of it, it's really, really complex. And it's really, really getting into what we had to deal with in the enterprise space. I mean, every one of these negotiations I'm involved with, I always feel, you know, like I've been, been you know, pulled back in time 20 years, and I'm, you know, dealing with the large database providers and large, large iron providers and, you know, again, again, large uh, app dev platforms, things like that, or we're just dealing with, um, you know, different ways of consuming the technology, which really doesn't make, make that much of a honking deal. So we have to think proactively in how we do this, understand the fact that many of the patterns we had to deal with in the past really haven't changed. And therefore many of the negotiating tactics haven't changed. I you know, wrote in this article, you have to be able to walk away, you know, very much like you're you know, walking away from a you know car deal because you're trying to get a better price. You have to be willing to do that. You got to get the comps, and you got to make sure that you know use other options against them. I mean, you know, it's funny. And so, you know, years ago, I had um, you know some clients negotiating for you know a better deal with a cloud provider, and, and they used to send them uh, accident accidentally on purpose, um, you know, pricing from the other providers so they could. You know, kind of, uh, you know, throw up, you know, put something across the bow of the person that they wanted a cheaper price, or put in the bow of the uh, the public cloud provider they wanted a cheaper price. Those kinds of things are occurring now. You know, people are playing the same games. Where you think about it, we got in cloud computing because it's going to be a consistent price for everybody. And now that enterprises are spending 100 million, 200 million, and even more on cloud-based systems. Uh, that's no longer the case. They're you know, not only asking, but they're demanding for discounts, basically, that kind of spend. 
Yeah, so true, so true. And look, it, it does move us on nicely to your top three tips, actually. I mean, we've covered quite a lot of ground already, and uh, I know we, 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 there's so much great content that we get in these shows. The top three tips is like, are there any more top tips we can offer? Um, but I'm sure, I'm sure we've got some tucked up your sleeve somewhere there, Dave. So if you'd love to share them, that'd be great. Yeah, I make this crap up as I go. So plenty of stuff for that came from. <laughs> We're on show 50. You're not so, allowed to give that away. <laughs> so make sure you understand what other people are paying. We talked about the comments. It's probably the most valuable weapon you have in your in your court. And um, because if you don't, you're liable to pay much more than other people have paid. And so understand the comps and what people are paying. And many times um, when they negotiate a deal, the public cloud providers may make the company sign a non-disclosure. You know, it's a typical, like, this is a deal for you because they like you. You know, don't tell anybody else is such a good deal. That actually exists, you know, in, in real life. Um, but through certain entities, certain contacts, you know, leveraging the right consultants, you should be able to figure out what the going rate is for a, a storage system, an object database. Um, you know, these things out there we use to leverage our, to build our systems. So need, need to find the right price, you know, not your price. That means what other people are paying and what the right price is for the particular, you know, storage system. One of the things I, uh, you know, tell people, you know, this is not about beating each other down to the lowest price. This is about paying a fair price for a particular commodity you're going to leverage. So you want to get the support and value from the provider. You don't want them to go away thinking, you know, that you've um, you've taken them for a ride or vice versa. And that's where bad feeling comes in and the bad relationships occur. And that's not something you should do with a cloud provider. Or if you're a cloud provider, definitely don't do that with your customer. And then don't forget about the SLA as a service level agreement. I mean, if you pay a lot of money, uh, you know, you get a huge discount from a cloud provider. That doesn't make much difference. If they provide you with a lousy SLA and, you know, suddenly they're, they're, they're having outages and systems are going down and you're being routed all over the world in terms of leveraging uh, cloud-based resources. And so those need to be spelled out and those need to be enforced. You have to have some way to, number one, write those contracts in a certain way where everybody can understand them. And number two, have some sort of a governance system in there, some sort of auditing system in there. So we realize when we're taking for a ride or they're not living up, you know, to the SLAs that are there. Yeah, so true. Those SLAs are so important, as as every as everything that you've mentioned is, because uh, you know the accumulative value of getting a better deal and and feeling you've got a better deal in effect could impact the overall value your customer is experiencing. Uh, you know, just because you've you've gone to save a, a few hundred, you know, thousand or something, you know, it's going to impact in in millions when the you know the the bad word of mouth gets out there that the experience is absolutely atrocious because of that saving so yeah it's um yeah you've raised some great points there i've just picked on one of them <laughs> as usual thanks dave for your top three tips that's awesome i'm glad you like them <laughs> not just me i hope everyone likes them um but yeah no look thanks for uh, thanks for watching this week's show we hope you enjoyed watching this week's show um and dave thanks for being part of this week's show the big 5-0 it's amazing how quick that's come around Congratulations for the big 5-0. It's always a pleasure, Brad. Thanks, Dave. Thank you. And thanks for watching, everyone. We hope you enjoyed watching this week's show. You can get David on Twitter, which is at David Linthicum. Uh, I'm on Twitter also at Nelson underscore Hilliard on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, everything like that. So check us out. We've got some great blogs as well that come out weekly uh, from David, which is awesome. Uh, below in the description box are links to that as well. So remember to subscribe to the latest blogs um, and also subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on the latest shows coming up, which is awesome. Uh, and click that notification bell so uh, you'll notify obviously uh, of when the shows are released thanks for watching and until next week